Hello and welcome to another South Dakota Varsity Sports Update. I'm Jason Andera and we have a lot for you today. The idea here for this webisode is to get you the information that you want. So make sure to send in suggestions and topics to me through any of our social media channels. All right, let's start with our game of the week. Harrisburg came into Tuesday's game against uh, Brookings unbeaten and they were riding high off coming off of an upset over number one Brandon Valley. Let's take a look at the highlights in this rematch between Harrisburg and Brookings. Two teams looking for big things this year. Let's start it off with Brookings. Ava Burns gets going early. Nice turnaround little bunny and Brookings was up early but after that it was all Harrisburg. Abby Phipps hits a three and the Tigers would not look back after that. USD recruit Janaya Yugovsky coast to coast. And look at that, she has a left hand. Nice balance by the future Coyote. She gets the finish plus the foul. The three party would begin. Faith Van Hollen knocks down this triple. And then senior Mackenzie Beaner gets involved. She knocks down a three of her own right here to give Harrisburg a 20 point lead. They were absolutely killing it. Yugovsky buries another three and that would put the game away. The Tigers go ahead and get the 58-30 win. After the game, we caught up with the coach, Anjanai Yugovsky. You know, I thought our kids came out right away from the jump and, uh, you know, we're focused. Uh, I thought our kids did a great job taking the scouting report to the floor. I think we've done a really nice job of that this year. And we shot the ball well. I, th I felt like, uh, you know, if, if Brookies got on a run a little bit, then we were able to, to counter that with uh, either a big three, a big bucket, a couple free throws. Uh, you know, I thought defensively our kids were just, just bought in. I mean, they uh, just flat out got after them and, and didn't make anything easy. Uh, you know, they made a little bit of a run uh, third, fourth quarter, but I thought our kids just did a phenomenal job of, uh, of limiting uh, their offensive rebounds. Uh, yeah, I know that was kind of a big thing for them in that Brandon Valley game the other week. They got a lot of rebounds uh, and our kids just did a nice job of trying to keep them off the glass. Honestly, it was everybody combining into one, really focusing down on what we needed to do. We did those hustle plays and I think we beat a really good team and it was just from everybody's help that we were able to continue to win. Big win for Harrisburg as they stay undefeated. That brings us to our next portion of the update. A look at the rankings that were released on Monday. And I said say whether teams were overrated or underrated in the latest poll. Now remember, these are only my comparisons as of where I voted versus where they actually came out in the rankings. So don't take it too seriously, okay? All right, let's start off with the Warner girls. They came out ranked number two in girls B. I previously had them as the top ranked team in class B, but they had a one point loss to Corsica Stickney at the Parkston Classic. I'm not sure how they stayed ahead of the Jags after that loss. And there's, you know, the Jags are still unbeaten. So, yes, Warner, you are overrated at number two. Do I still think you're a title contender? Yes, of course I do. They will be in the end, you know, in the mix no matter what happens. But uh, they have another big game coming up against Ethan this weekend. So they'll have a chance to get back on that winning track and maybe even be the number two or maybe even number one team in next week's rankings, but right now, a little overrated. All right, next team to judge, the Sturgis boys. They are one of just two unbeaten teams in Class AA and were receiving votes in the latest poll, but not ranked. So are they overrated or underrated? I think they're slightly underrated, yes. I know they've played only one AA team so far this year, but look how dominant they've been. They average winning by 27.3 points per game in their first six games. And the one time they did play a double-A team, they won on the road by 26 points. Yes, I know the real test comes this weekend when they have back-to-back -back games against Rapid City Central and Rapid City Stevens, but I think they deserve at least a top-five spot, don't you? Really, other than that, uh, I pretty much agreed with the rest of the rankings. They reflected my views pretty well. All right, time to switch over to the game ball. We're going to talk about some of the top performers from last week. Let's start on the boys' side where there were a lot of contenders. Karst Hunter had a 41-point night. Justin Hone put up a triple-double for T. Sawyer Schultz out of Bridgewater Emory went for 35 and 20 points. But the winner of this week's game ball, Matthew Moores, first of the year for him, put up a career-high 46 points on Tuesday night, and he did it against a ranked team. He broke his own career high at the Yankton High School and he shot 8 for 13 from three-point land to lead Yankton to a 66 60 win. He just keeps doing big things and he is just a sophomore, remember. 
All right, and girls hoops, a lot of big performances to talk about, but Tuesday night, there was one that really shined above the rest. Hallie Heinz of Ipswich, she put on a show against Northwestern. The sophomore sensation broke out with a state record 10 triples. Yes, 10 three-pointers. Her previous season high, four. She caught fire from beyond the arc. She averages 16 and a half points per game and leads Ipswich in scoring this year, and they're out to a 6-2 start. Congrats to the Tigers. All right. Thanks again for sending all those questions in on Mount Talkmore. We got a ton of responses from you on Instagram. Uh, you can make topic suggestions through our Instagram account or really any of our social media channels. But we picked a couple questions out. First question, or comment, I should say, Class B boys basketball needs some love, says Jackson Fegan. All right, here's some love. All five teams in the latest boys B poll are unbeaten, and unbeaten at least in the class. So let's take a closer look and see which team might stay unbeaten the longest. First, Bridgewater Emory. They're number one. They are the only team that actually has a loss. They lost to Breckenridge, Minnesota in overtime at the Corn Palace over the break at the Hoop City Classic. They have a couple of tough games coming up, but they'll be part of that Hanson Classic on January 19th. And uh, then after that, they face Hanson on the 25th of January and play in the DSU Classic on the 26th. So a tough road coming up for them. The number two team, Clark Willow Lake. They will also be at the Hanson Classic a week from Saturday. And then they have another tough matchup coming up on January 26th when they play that NEC DAC 12 Challenge. The number three team, White River. Still unbeaten after surviving a couple games against Class A teams earlier this year. They have the Jones County Tournament this weekend, and then, of course, the Hanson Classic next weekend, followed by a rematch against Pine Ridge on the 25th. Then there's Timberlake. They just took care of a Class A team in winter, and they take on Redfield on Saturday and then head to Oneida to play the state champion, Class B state champion Sully Buttes team. Followed by, of course, the Hanson Classic. They just get invited to this classic as well, back on uh, coming up on January 19th. That is a brutal schedule. Then there's one more unbeaten team in Class B, Aberdeen Christian. They're the new kids on the block, but they're mowing down the competition. They face Potter County, Wabe Summit, Falkton area before they head to the Hanson Classic. So I see a theme here. All five of these teams will be at the Hanson Classic a week from Saturday. Can't wait until those pairings come out in just a couple of days. We'll literally have a pre-state tournament feel coming up on the Corn Palace floor. All right, next question. Who's in the Mr. Basketball race from the Ali Rama? And Ali, you are on this list. There are many postseason awards, but the Mr. and Miss Basketball Awards are giving to the top performing male and female seniors as chosen by a select panel of coaches. So who are the top seniors in the Mr. Basketball race? Jared Jaros of Sioux Falls Lincoln. He got hurt a couple weeks ago, has come back and absolutely shined, helping his team beat Yankton, the only team that's beaten Yankton this year. Uh, Noah Friedel and Justin Holn are candidates from T area. Ali Rama, yes, you are definitely a candidate, almost averaging 40 points per game. And then there are a couple others, like Jacob Prouty out of Clark Willow Lake. And you have to talk about Trey King when you talk about best players in the state as well. Ton of great players to talk about in the Mr. Basketball race. All right, let's talk about the Miss Basketball race. I know you didn't ask, but I'm going to tell you anyway. Uh, the first contender, I think, will be Janiya Yugovsky, headed to South Dakota from Harrisburg. She has been steady all season long, averaging over 10 rebounds per game. How about Michaela Jewett of Brookings? She's got to be in the conversation. Trinity Law and Danica Kocher out of Brandon Valley, more AA uh, title contenders. And then Lori Rogers, I think, maybe is the favorite at this point in the season from Warner. But other Class B contenders like Lauren Sees or Carly Gustafson could come up and win that. And then, of course, we've got to talk about Madison Vlastuin out of Lennox as one of the top contenders. But she is only a junior. So these are just seniors we're talking about for the Miss Basketball race. All right, there are some milestones set over the uh, last couple of days. And let's uh, honor some of those milestones by first taking a look at Nash Hutmaker, yes, we're not talking about basketball for a second. The heavyweight state champ out of Chamberlain recorded his 100th match win on Saturday. He went on to win the Dan Panch Jesse James Invitational in Brandon after that 100th win, so congrats to Nash. I don't see a loss coming up very soon. 
Secondly, Jamin Aaron of Bridgewater Emory and Courtney Menning of Corsica Stickney both went over that 1,000-point mark, which is always a fun milestone to hit for a basketball player. Way to go. And last but definitely not least, Don Seiler, the 35-year head coach out of Aberdeen Central, surpassed the all-time record for most wins in girls' basketball in South Dakota history with 596. She went past Rob Van Lacken of Parkston. Dawn has spent most of her career in Aberdeen Central, but also coached at McIntosh. And uh, that record by Rob Van Lacken was set just six years ago. Now Dawn is going to take that record and run with it. You are one of a kind, Dawn. Congratulations. All right, we had a nice batch of dunks sent in this week. You'll see the high flyers all the way from Rapid City to T, and we'll leave you at the end of the show with some of the finest dunks we've seen all week. Check them out in the Thunder Report. Thanks for sending in all the dunks. Let's take a look at the Thunder Report for this week. Carter Altoff gets the feed from Evan Talcott, puts it down. Nice dunk. This is not a replay, folks, against Roosevelt later this week. Talcott to Altoff again. What a leaper. What a pass. All right, at the Barefoot Classic, the feed inbounds to Noah Friedel. Noah Friedel fries that punch. Up and in, off the inbound pass from Justin Hone. That was pretty. All right, Joe Woods, Rapid City Central. This guy's 5'10", and off the rebound, skying for the left-hand jam. One of the best we've seen this year. So look at the 5'10 dunker again. This guy has some serious hops. Elijah Williams from Rapid City Central as well on the fast break. Finds the hoop at the end of the rainbow. Another look at our dunks from the Thunder Report. Keep sending them in.